Hi everyone, welcome to my review of The Man with the Golden Gun, um, the ninth Bond film, uh, and once again directed by Guy Hamilton. Um, and it's a year after um, Live and Let Die, which I really liked. Um, and it's the second uh, Roger Moore film. Um, and this one, it's it's you know it's less received uh, than Live and Let Die. It's not considered one of the best really at all. It's you know it's not well regarded really. Um, but you know on paper it's got a lot of things uh, going for it. And you know Christopher Lee as a villain, you know, he, you know one of the great actors uh, for me, and certainly with, in terms of villains, you know playing villains. Um, but this was more of a, a, a low key bond again, um, like Live and Let Die was compared to you know the later uh, Roger Moore bonds. Um, you know, and the pre-title sequence, I was really you know impressed with. Um, it was really well shot. Um, a great intro really to um, the villain played by Christopher Lee um, and his side villain Nick Knack. Um, and you know, there's it's comedy in there, but you know, Christopher Lee plays his villain. You know. He, He's definitely a threat, you know. He seems like a threat. Um, and I just thought the the way the, you know the mirrors and stuff were used and um, the colours were really good. You know, a lot of the bonds um, in the seventies kind of onwards would, especially the more ones would, kind of imitate a lot of things that came out other films that came out at the time. Um, Moonraker would, you know, clearly do Star Wars um, and stuff. You have like Raiders of the Lost Ark with um, Octopussy a little bit. Um, this one was more uh, martial arts films, um, you know, that came prominently into the US. Uh, and, you know, End of the Dragon had just came out uh, a year before. Um, and this was clearly influenced by that, I think, um, some of the martial arts uh, stuff. Um, but, you know, it worked well with a lot of that, um, I thought. Um, but the title sequence, you know, it, it's not good. Um, and the title song is, for me, probably the worst Bond song. Um, it's one of the only ones where it really does hurt my ears um, when you know it's playing and it's just the lyrics are so poor um, it's just so annoying poorly sung um, and just just stupid um, really annoying um, you know, it's by Lulu and every time I hear it I just I just kind of cringe as well uh, one of the most cheesy songs I've ever heard um, and does not fit this theme uh, does not fit this film at all um, just has no place here, you know. Uh, but, you know, Roger Moore, again, does a fine job, um, I thought. And, you know, as I say, the villains are really good. Uh, the Bond girl, uh, Britt Eklund, who uh, plays Mary Goodnight, um, she's she's quite forgettable. She's not that good. Um, um, but she's not bad, you know. She's not annoying, really. Um, and you've got uh, Nick Knack as well. He's, I think he's a really um, good side villain. He's funny in that, but you know, it's a bit stereotypical. Um, that's definitely a flaw of the film. Um, but you know, the first, um, the first act I thought was really good. Um, introduced things well, and you know, it turns out that, that, that Scaramanga becomes linked to the death of this scientist, and that's how um, you know um, Bond is sent to investigate things. And eventually, you know, ending on uh, Scaramanga's Island, um, the showdown, uh, and that's the last act of the film. But I thought the certainly the first act and the second act um, were again good, uh, you know, really good at times. Um, I thought the action again was well shot. Um, uh, Clifton James make, makes another um, return, um, but this time, you know, he's not good, I didn't think. Um, it was usually well, I thought, in Live and Let Die. Um, yeah, it was generally funny, I thought. Um, and the tone of that film was more of a comedy. Um, this has got a weird tone, I think. Um, some things don't quite work. Um, you know, it's, it's, at times it's, it's a bit serious, uh, really serious, and then, you know, it, it tries to be a comedy at other times, but um, sometimes it does work, um, other times it doesn't. Um, and, you know, for example, Nick Knack can be a bit of a hit and miss in the film. Uh, slight moments where he's quite annoying and just it doesn't work but um, there's other times where he is really funny and it works um, but Clifton James in this film they used him really badly I think um, and there's a there's a famous kind of joke uh, involving an elephant um, kind of early on in the film and it was really childish you know it, it didn't work at all and I think this was just a lazy choice to put him in here um, and he wasn't used well at all
as uh, Sheriff Pepper. Um, you know, it's just childish. It wasn't needed, really. Uh, and, of course, he's involved in one of the, you know, the, well, on its own, the, you know, the, the roll, the car roll over the bridge. Um, it's a great stunt. Um, that's another, you know, the action in this film is really good. Uh, and the stunt itself was amazing, but again, they use, you know, they use the whistle effect, uh, and it kind of undermines that that stunt. If they had left that out, it would have been a lot better. Um, but this is one of the things, you know, the comedy sometimes just doesn't work in the film, and it just undermines some of the, you know, the serious uh, moments. Um, what could have been a stunning, well, it still is a stunning stunt, but it could have been a lot better. Um, and you know, the, the comedy elements came in there and took away from it, you know, slightly. But the action throughout the film is generally really good. Um, and I thought the fight scenes were really good. Um, the score, of course, is, is, is not good, um, really. Uh, there's only so much they could have done with that. Um, you know, the song is just, it's terrible. Uh, and, you know, it does appear throughout the film as, a you know, instrumental. And, it, it, you know, it doesn't really add anything. It just kind of, uh, makes it more of a cheesy, cheap um, feel to the film. Um, but you know, it was solidly directed, I thought, um, edited really well uh, for the most part. And you know, it didn't let the, the influences, you know, i.e., the martial arts, um, take away from the film really as a whole. And it was used, um, I thought, really well. And you know, the script in this film is um, it's pretty solid. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty basic, but it works for the most part. Um, and you know Christopher Lee, you know again, he, he's really good in this film, and you know some of his lines is really good. Um, and he's, I think he's, he never really plays a bad villain in any of the films I've seen him in. And you know without him though, I think uh, this would this film wouldn't have been quite as good. Um, and you know he's one of the strong points of the film overall. It's you know it's it's a pretty in places generic film um, in the Bond franchise. You know doesn't really stand out other than I suppose Christopher Lee and Nick Knack and some other things you know but you know it's, it's overall it's pretty just solid um, at times really good action and stuff but um, you know it's, it's not really um, it's, it's kind of standard bonfair um, with some you know some good villains and stuff but um, overall I think you know it's kind of the, the final act lets it down a little bit again um, once Bond gets onto the island of Scaramanga um, you know Christopher Lee again really good um, but just some of the things that goes on um, there and that uh, just a bit a bit standard a bit too generic um, and it kind of just drags on a little bit um, there's not really much going on there um, and you know the ending the ending's really not a good it's not a good ending um, you know that really, if you, it's just really cheesy, really. Um, and there's a stupid moment right at the end that goes into the credits, which uh, it just, you know, it was really, really bad. I thought, um, you know, Lulu actually kind of, kind of just like interacts with, you know, the film in a way that just doesn't work. The ending, um, but you know, overall, I, I still enjoyed the film. Um, I thought, you know. It, Great film, Christopher Lee and Nick Knack, of course. Um, and Roger Moore again was solid. Um, you know, he, he he wasn't quite on that level of you know, um, Octopussy, A Few to a Kill. Uh, he was still still solid here. Um, you know, likable. And the chemistry between him and Christopher Lee was really good. I thought uh, the hero and the villain. Um, and it had you know it had a, quite a few things going for it. Um, it's just, um, it's, it's quite a few things that let it down and, um, you know, just generally it doesn't quite reach the, you know, the heights of a lot of the other bombs. Um, but by no means it's a bad film and I think it's still underrated. Um, but, you know, I can understand how it's not talked about more because um, it is kind of just standard bond, um, which is why I give it a 70%. Um, you know, good, nothing more. Um, and you know, without Christopher Lee and a couple of other things, um, it would have been worse. But you know, as it is, it's a good Bond film. Um, you know, it drags at times and it doesn't quite have that energy of you know, Live and Let Die did. Um, but it, it's definitely a it's definitely a solid Bond film. Um, 
and certainly not. Um, st I'd certainly take this over a few to a kill. Uh, there's a spoiler. Um, you know, it it doesn't insult really to that level, at least. Um, but yeah, um, sec uh, second Roger Moore film, um, solid Bond. Um, and next up is the Spy Who Loved Me. Um, which of course is regarded as the best Roger Moore uh, Bond and you know among the best in the franchise um, so we look forward to that um, but for now um, farewell and thanks for watching my review